The Stack, People, Business, Technology, with Dan Tomaszewski of Everything MSP. Hey everybody, Dan Tomaszewski here with Everything MSP. This is a special edition of The Stack where we focus on people, business, and technology. This special edition is at Threat Locker's Zero Trust World 2025 here in Orlando, Florida. Like many events, it is packed with networking and education. However, one of the things that is distinguishable about the event is the incredible amount of real-world security education and hands-on learning. Now, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the highlights of the event, talk to some MSPs that are here in attendance, but most specifically, we're going to cover the five big product launches that are coming out from this event. And uh, so let's get started. The event kicked off with two very intriguing keynote speakers. There was Christopher Tarbell, a former FBI special agent, and Hector Monisker, a former black hat hacker. What makes them intriguing is that Monisker was a once notorious hacker known as Sabu. And he was apprehended by Tarbell and eventually became an FBI informant. So pretty, um, pretty wild to have these two gentlemen on stage with one of them having arrested the other um, in, in former, uh, former times. So they discussed their unique journey into cybersecurity and the evolving landscape of cyber threats and the crucial role of AI, both offensively and defensively with those strategies. Now, what I wanna do is share some of the key highlights from them. Cybersecurity is a constantly evolving field, of course. Now, organizations need to stay ahead of the curve to protect themselves, and they need us to help them with that process. The human element remains a critical vulnerability, and in investing in cybersecurity, education and awareness is crucial. AI is playing an increasingly important role, both with cyber offense and defense. Implementing a strong security posture requires a top-down approach that requires leadership buy-in and employee accountability. Organizations need to adopt a proactive and preemptive approach to cybersecurity, anticipating and mitigating potential threats before they occur. Now, there was uh, another comment that I wanted to mention from Christopher that uh, really jumped out at me, that uh, much of what we are seeing today are things that we've seen, you know, 10 years ago. Unfortunately, though, they're at a much more sophisticated level which makes it even more important for us to continue to one-up the bad actors. So next up, we had Danny Jenkins, CEO of Threat Locker, on stage um, multiple times. However, in this particular uh, session, he was focused on actionable steps to improve your security posture. All right, so here are some of Danny's key takeaways. Number one, uh, zero trust mindset, of course, adopting a default deny approach, granting access only when absolutely necessary. Prioritize action. Don't get bogged down in lengthy frameworks. Focus on addressing the most critical risks first. Educating users. Train users to be vigilant against phishing attacks especially those domain spoofing. AI-generated malware. Traditional antivirus struggles to detect AI-created malware. Focus on blocking all unnecessary software. Another one here is domain spoofing. Be aware of subtle differences in a domain name, such as the letter L, that could be used for phishing. Educate users and consider purchasing and registering variations of domains for yourself as well as for your client. Next up, 
exploitation of tools. Restrict or block tools like PowerShell if not needed. If needed, use ring fencing to limit their access. Phishing. Enable multi-factor authentication and consider blocking access to browser cookies. Token theft. Enforce re-authentication on cloud accounts and block access to untrusted IP addresses. Software vulnerabilities. Patch software diligently. Ring fence applications to limit the impact of exploits and limit outbound internet access for servers. Supply chain attacks. Review vendor security posture and limit the privileges of third-party applications. So these are a bunch of great uh, takeaways from Danny that can be put in place today. All right, so we're going to move on uh, to our next section here. All right, so Danny Jenkins was back on stage as well as Chief Product Officer Rob Allen, and they uh, took the stage to announce some massive additions to their product lineup. And I'm going to cover um, each of these five real briefly. Uh, Threat Locker Insights is the first one. Uh, think of this as a cy cybersecurity cheat sheet. It uses data from millions of computers to instantly tell you if an application is behaving normally so you can make fast and smart security decisions without hours of research. Secondly, Threat Locker Patch Management. Uh, this takes the headache out of software updates. Threat Locker handles it all, from finding the updates to testing them in a safe environment so you get reliable patches without the risk of breaking down your system. Next up is the Threat Locker User Store. It's an app store for your company, but with guaranteed security. Users can download pre-approved apps and ThreatLocker automatically sets them up right with all the security rules, saving you time and keeping everything safe. We also have um, heard about their ThreatLocker web controls. Uh, this brings website security directly into ThreatLocker. No more juggling different tools. It simplifies the web access controls with an automatically updated website category library and it extends this control to unmanaged devices. Last but not least is ThreatLocker's cloud control. This is your Microsoft 365 bodyguard, if you will. It stops phishing and token theft by allowing logins from trusted networks and devices. Uh, if a connection is, isn't from a place that ThreatLocker recognizes, it is blocked. Now, these are the five updates. You can learn more about these updates on ThreatLocker's website. Um, and we also do have a couple MSPs that have shared some of their thoughts on these as well. So hang tight for those. All right, so for the next segment, we're going to um, bring in some MSPs uh, that we spoke to earlier today and we have a number of questions for them about the event as well as some of the, the product announcements. And uh, so we'll jump on to each of those. And here we go. We've got Brandis Kelly with Digitech and we are live here at Zero Trust World in Orlando, Florida. How are you doing today, Brandis? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Uh, Jam-packed days of all kinds of learning and networking. What? Um, you know, what would you say is one of the best parts of going to an event, just in general? The community, always. I mean, I'm part of a few different organizations and just getting together in a big room full of people, a lot of people you don't know, and being able to have conversations, uh, talk to different vendors, and just see how other MSPs are using all kinds of products and solutions in their environments and just learn from each other. Yeah. Community, hands down. Uh, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned Danny and his passion. So can you you know, share some of your thoughts on that and why that makes a difference in selecting a vendor like ThreatLocker? Danny is one of probably the most passionate people about, about security and what he does to help his clients and then therefore helping our clients 
And when you have a leader like that in an organization that has that much passion and drive behind any concept, any idea, anything that they roll out, it's just, you just know that it's going, like they're going to see it through. They're going to make sure that everything is dialed in and working as it should. And if there's anything that comes up, they're gonna be right all over it, making sure they get it fixed, quickly get it fixed. And, you know, just continue to help all of us. And I, Danny is just top notch. He truly believes in everything he says, everything he um, has brought to us as MSPs. And I just couldn't ask for just a better leader in this organization, especially because we're heavy, you know, threat locker users. We, it's probably our hands down favorite product, favorite security tool that we have. And I think that it speaks a lot to the leadership of this organization and of Threat Locker. Being MSP, and I've got Brian Weiss here with iTech Solutions. How are you doing today, Brian? Doing great, thank you. We are here at Zero Trust World, uh, amazing event. I would love to hear specifically what has really captured your attention so far in the, in the event. Uh, it's my first Zero Trust World, and I have to say that I love the security focus. Um, I love the fact that while we are talking about Threat Locker quite a bit, because it is a Threat Locker event, uh, it's, it doesn't feel like a sales conference. We're, we're really kind of getting into best practices, whether you use Threat Locker or not, you know, around properly securing our clients. So tell me um, a second thing that really jumped out at you that uh, captured your attention something that you'd like to implement in the business when you get back? Yeah, so the, um, the second item uh, that we're very excited to use is uh, insights. Um, with insights, you have the ability to essentially have a dashboard that gives you a, a nice visualiz visualization of the application that you might set up a policy for, as well as who else is actually running it um, across all of ThreatLocker's clients. You know, are they allowing it? Are they denying it? Uh, what does that look like? Um, so, really like the idea that we're we're crowdsourcing information. You know, sec yeah. cybersecurity should not be a competition. We should be sharing the information that we are are using to help better protect ourselves. And so, Threat Locker is allowing that to happen through the Insights dashboard. Right. So trust yeah. World. yeah. And I have Ryan Trogden with Net Sciences. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks. So, tell me, uh, this is your first event for Zero Trust World, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, tell me what are your thoughts about the event so far? I think it's great. I love the exposure and just kind of being able to network with others and really getting some of the hands-on type of things that you're not necessarily exposed to in everyday you know, events, so it's been great. Yeah, so that hands-on is really a unique thing about the event. So taking a look at uh, the sessions, can you tell me about one of the hands-on sessions that you went to? Yeah, definitely. So um, we did take a look at the Try Hack Me Lab that they had offered, and that was kind of focused on a Active Directory exploit. And I thought that that was really interesting. They kind of went into some of the processes and the concepts of how you would think about performing those types of exploits and hacks, which really helps when you're defending because you know the routes that they're going to take. So it was right. really cool. And, and we have Zachary Kinder hey. with NetTech. Yes, sir. And how are you doing today? Uh, if I were any better, I'd be twins. Thanks for asking. <laughs> well, we are at an amazing event. You have all the awesome swag. You've got the gold t-shirt edition. You've got a gold pin on your hat. Yes, sir. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got this extraordinary swag, man. So I've been coming to Zero Trust World now for the last four years. So. We first came in 2022. Okay. And so the award for passing the cyber here in 2022 was this little lovely gold pin. So, so we collected that there. This gold shirt we got in 2023 for being a gold partner. And I bought this hat last year. Nice. So, yeah. That is awesome. Yes, but sir. This morning, they dropped some amazing announcements about new product offerings. And right. I'd like you to tell me what's something that really captured your attention and why is it going to be important for your business? So the thing that really captured our attention is the Threat Locker user store among the five innovations that were dropped. Yes. I think that one's going to be the most visible to the end user and it's going to provide the most impact for freeing up everyone's time because as MSPs, time is our enemy. 
And so with this, this is gonna help cut down that noise. It's gonna make Threat Locker more visible to the end user, and it's just gonna provide deep value. That's really what it is. Very cool. You know, at the end of the day, when we take a look at how much time that we have um, delivering our services to our clients, do you see that this is gonna help eliminate some steps from a ticketing perspective? So it's gonna save you time, but it's also gonna provide tremendous value for your clients. This is gonna save everybody time. It's gonna elevate Threat Locker to a new status level in our organization and our clients. Um, it, it's, it's just absolutely incredibly game changing. What would one thing you would tell an MSP that is not a Threat Locker partner today that they should do and why they should add it to their stack? There's so many reasons why I think an MSP should add that's not using Threat Locker should add Threat Locker to their stack. But I think the number one reason is it's your job to keep our customers safe. They rely on you to protect their livelihoods. These are businesses that they built. It's their legacy. And Threat Locker helps protect legacy. Awesome. All right, that wraps things up for this special edition of The Stack, where we are here at uh, Threat Locker Zero Trust World in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's content. And uh, to learn more about Threat Locker, of course, you can go to Threat Locker's website. Um, or if you are on the everythingmsp.com website, you can search for Threat Locker and uh, seek out more information and uh, schedule time with them as well. So with that being said, thank you so much for listening and being here today. And we will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Stack.